जय हिंद चिल्ड्रेन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ माय स्टूडेंट इन टूडेज लाइव क्लास चिल्ड्रेन इन प्रीवियस क्लास आई हैव स्टार्टेड द चैप्टर स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ मैटर एंड वी हैव डिस्कस सम ऑफ द टॉपिक्स ऑफ द चैप्टर एंड आई होप दैट यू अंडरस्टूड दो Now today we'll discuss the next topic of the chapter. Now, for starting the topic, I am going to share my screen for slides. Now, children, the topic is differences between compound and a mixture. As we already have discussed about the definition of compound and mixture. Now, in this topic. we will discuss mainly about the differences between these two so most of the substances around us are mixtures like air is also a mixture and the air is a mixture of several gases the tap water is also a mixture and this tap water contains several compounds which are dissolved in pure water while a mixture can be made by mixing together two or more elements or compounds in any ratio a compound is always made up of elements combined in a fixed ratio that always remains the same going to explain that the difference between compound and a mixture now i'm going to use my board differences between a compound and a mixture so remember students in previous class i have explained you about the compound in compound whatever the constituents which are present here whatever the substances which are mixed together they mixed chemically they combined chemically and in a definite ratio then it will form the compound whereas a mixture the components are the constituents they are in any ratio there is no any fixed ratio of the components in mixture and they are not going to react chemically they are just mixed physically so such of the substances more than one is known as mixture so the first difference is there in case of compound the constituents are components are in fixed ratio whereas in mixture components are in any ratio there is no any fixed proportion or the ratio of the components second thing is that when a compound is going to form so the components of the compound can be separated by chemical method only 
But here, in case of mixture, the components which are present, they can be separated by physical method easily. So, these are going to explain the differences between a compound and a mixture. Now, we will discuss these differences again in more detailed way in the form of table. Today is in the last. Now, come back to the slide. Now, here in the chapter, we have some activities to explain you about the mixture and the compound. So, first, the activity number one, put some powdered iron and some powdered sulfur in a china dish. Mix them thoroughly. Now, bring a magnet near them you will find that the powdered iron in the mixture is attracted by the magnet. And the magnet can be used to completely separate iron and sulfur. So children, this activity is going to explain that we can separate the components of the mixture easily. Now come back to the board to explain the activity. Activity number one. In this activity, which is given in your book, simply going to explain that when we are going to prepare a mixture. So, the components of a mixture can easily separate it by physical method. So, the procedure that we will use in this activity is we will take a bowl. put some of sulfur powder in it and we will add some of the iron powder. Now, with the help of a spoon, we will mix them properly. So the powder of iron and sulfur get mixed together. After mixing them, One more thing children, here we have not taken the powder, sulfur and the iron powder in any definite ratio. We have taken just a amount of iron and sulfur. You can say that one spoon of iron powder and one spoon of sulfur powder or two spoon of sulfur powder. So when we mix them with a spoon, so after mixing them, this mixture looks like that. Both the components that iron and sulfur get mixed but it can be seen easily from out with our eyes and if we want to separate them so simply we will take a bar of magnet and we move that bar of magnet in the mixture of bowl. So after moving this bar of magnet in the mixture of bowl,
the particles of iron get stuck on the surface of magnet as you know that iron is a magnetic material so it will get attracted towards the magnet and get stuck to the surface and the sulfur which is a non magnetic material it will remain there in the bow so simply with the help of a magnet we have separated here both the components of this mixture and there is no any kind of chemical reaction observed so we can say that when iron powder and sulfur powder mix physically no chemical reaction is occur and it forms a mixture it will not form any compound i hope that you understood the activity number 1 now one more activity they are given in your chapter and in this activity now mix 8 grams of sulfur and 14 grams of iron in a china dish and heat the mixture after some time the mixture will begin to glow and give off heat a black substance that called iron sulfide is formed the particles of iron and sulfur cannot be seen separately now nothing happens if a magnet is brought close to the substance so it will get clear with the help of activity number 2 when a compound form the properties are the characteristic of the compound is completely different from the properties of their constituents so we'll then come back to the board now here we have the activity number 2 and in this activity most of the process is same and some are differences like we will take a bowl and this bowl will made up of china dish we'll take the china dish bowl it is a an special kind of bowl which is used mainly in chemistry labs to heat the substances at high temperature so it's known as china dish so first of all we'll take a china dish as in this we will take the 8 gram of sulfur by weighing the sulfur powder we have taken here the 8 gram of sulfur powder and we will take the 14 gram of iron powder so the materials are the same but we have taken a proper quantity of these material these component like 14 g of iron powder and 8 g of sulfur powder now we'll mix them properly with the help of a spoon and after that after mixing as after mixing it will looks like a mixture because the constituent particles are seen clearly and they can be separated by magnet as we have done in activity number 2 now in this activity after mixing them 
we will heat this mixture at high temperature that is why we have used the china disc So our setup will be like this. This is China test. This one is the mixture of iron powder and sulfur powder. This is wire gauge, a net which is made up of the metal wires. This one is tripod stand. And the Bunsen burner. So, uh, children here you have to know that the names of these equipments which are used commonly in chemistry lab. As that Bunsen burner you must have seen in your chemistry lab. The tripod stand. The stand which is used to keep the bowl or beaker above the flame. And this wire case is also used to keep above the tripod stand to spread the flame of the burner equally to all surface of bowl or the beaker. That is why the wire gaze is used. So we will make this setup and heat this mixture for some time. At high flame. After some time, we will observe that the powder of iron and sulfur they are going to dissolve together and a blackish substance is going to form in the bowl. A blackish substance will form in the bowl and this blackish substance is iron sulfide which is a compound. This compound forms when these two components of the mixture that is iron and sulfur reacts chemically the help of chemical reaction and that chemical reaction occurs in the presence of heat because remember in activity number one as we not heated that mixture so this reaction not occur and no compound form it remains the mixture but the same mixture when going to heat so this chemical reaction occurs and a new substance that is iron sulfide is going to which is a compound. Now, one more thing children here you have to remember that the amount which we have taken 14 gram of iron powder and 8 grams of sulfur powder. This 
quantity is going to indicate that to form the molecules of iron sulfide when the chemical reaction will take place so in that chemical reaction these substances will react in a proper ratio and whatever the amount will left that will not form the compound so as i have told in previous class to form the carbon dioxide we need one atom of carbon and two atoms of oxygen and whatever is excess if more than carbon is there or more than oxygen is there so the excess amount of that component will remain separated and only the compound will form in this ratio suppose if we have four atoms of carbon and 12 atoms of oxygen so in this case the chemical reaction will occur but the number of molecules of carbon dioxide which will form it depends on the same ratio that 1 is to 2 so here in this case the number of molecules of carbon dioxide will be 3 as the carbon atoms are 4 four carbon atoms need the eight oxygen atoms and here we have the 12 oxygen atoms so sorry children here the four atom four molecules of carbon dioxide will form and whatever excess oxygen is there that is four four atoms of oxygen will be excess so they will not take part any role in this chemical reaction our four atoms of carbon get react chemically with eight atoms of oxygen and forms the four molecules of carbon dioxide and if the eight atoms of oxygen get used here so the rest of the oxygen that is four atoms of oxygen will be left that will get separately that will left at last so just like that here it will also happen the 14 gram of iron will get react chemically with 8 gram of sulfur it will form the molecules of iron sulfide now children i hope that you understood this activity properly again i'm going to draw the structure of the atoms and the molecules are these two activities that we have discussed now children in activity number 1 as we have discussed that when sulfur powder and iron powder get mixed together they not react chemically so suppose these are the atoms of sulfur and when we added the iron powder so the iron or uh, that atoms of iron
will seem like that. So here the atoms get mixed, but they are not going to react chemically. And in activity number two, when the sulfur powder and iron powder reacts while heating them, so their atoms get actually react chemically and they combine together. Both the atoms get attached together, joined together with the chemical reaction. So, this one is the structure. You can say that the molecular structure of the compound which form while heating the sulfur and iron powder. And this is the simple structure that will be present there in a mixture of iron and sulfur powder. Now, so let, I hope that you understood both the activities. One more thing you have to remember that if we want to separate the mixture only, so we can use the magnet. But if we move the magnet in iron sulphide, which are formed after heating the mixture a lot, then there is no effect of magnet on that iron sulphide. Means that particles of iron sulphide will not get attracted towards the magnet means that when the new compound form, the new substance form after the re chemical reaction, the characteristic features get changed. Before that reaction, that iron powder which are present there, they have the properties to attract towards the magnet. But after the reaction, when iron sulphide form, so their property get loosed. Now they are not going to attract towards the magnet. Now, in next topic, we have certain criteria to differentiate the compound and mixture. So, come to the next topic. We are going to use one by one the criteria to differentiate properly the compound and mixture. And our first criteria is combination of constituents. How the constituents are going to combine together? So, on the basis of this property, we can differentiate the compound and the mixture. As you know that, in case of a mixture, the constituents does not combine chemically. They just mix physically. Whereas, in case of a compound, the constituents combine chemically and form a new substance. So, on the basis of combination of constituent, we can say that in mixture, chemical combination is not occur, whereas in case of elements, the constituents combined chemically. Now, the second criteria is ratio of constituents. Ratio of constituents, the proportion of the constituent, the constituents which are used to mix together in both in case of mixture and in case of compound, they are of different. Like in case of mixture, as already I have explained you that, that components may be of in any ratio, in any proportion. There is no any effect on the mixture of the ratio of those constituents. 
whereas in case of compound the constituents which are used they must be in a definite ratio then they will react chemically otherwise the chemical reaction will not absorb and it will not form the compound for example as we know that the chemical formula of water is h2o it means that hydrogen two atoms and oxygen one atom means two is to one ratio of these constituent must be present but suppose we are going to mix the one atom of hydrogen with one atom of oxygen so in this case chemical reaction will not occur because the proportion which are required to make one molecule of water it's not available here oxygen is present that one atom but hydrogen is also present only one atom and we need at least two atoms to make one molecule of water so in this case the reaction will not occur and water will not form means compound will not form it will act just like as a mixture and if we are going to use the two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen then they will react chemically and form a compound i hope that you understood that the ratio of the constituents are matter a lot to form the compound whereas in mixture ratio does not matter the constituents may be in any ratio in any amount and one more thing is there children as the compounds are going to form while taking the two or more than two constituents so they will react chemically in a definite ratio if our constituents are excess more so rest of the constituents will left only that number of molecules which will form depends on the proper ratio as i explained you earlier suppose if we are going to take five atoms of hydrogen and two atoms of oxygen so the chemical reaction will occur the compound water will form and the one molecule of water as you know that need the ratio 2 is to 1 so our two molecules of water will form and the one atom of hydrogen will left because to form two molecules of water four atoms of oxygen hydrogen are required but we have five atoms of hydrogen to form two molecules of water two atoms of oxygen are required we have the two atoms of oxygen so oxygen will not be left only the atom of hydrogen will left because it is excess so two molecules will form and one atom of hydrogen will left so this is the second criteria on the basis of which we can differentiate a compound with mixture that is ratio of constituent now we can come to the next the third criteria is separation of constituent Separation of constituents. The constituents which are used here in mixture or in compound, how they can separate it? 
So simply in case of mixture, the constituent can be separated by physical method, either by using magnet or by uh, using the other modes of methods like filtration, using sieves and all. While in case of compound, the separation of constituent can only take place by certain chemical method, not by the physical method. Now the fourth criteria is properties. The properties of constituents in compound and in mixture. So, as the mixture is going to form by mixing the constituent uh, different elements. So that mixture will show the same property of that individual constituents as they have. But when a compound is going to form, so the properties will get completely changed as from their constituents. As in case of mixture of iron and sulfur, iron and sulfur remain have their same properties after mixing them in the bowl. That is why the iron get attracted towards the magnet. But when the same mixture get heated and a chemical reaction occur and a new substance form, so their chemical properties gets changed and a new property comes there. So these are the some of the criteria on the basis of which we can differentiate the mixture and compound. I hope that you understood these all topics which we have discussed. Now, thank you and a nice day.